Okay, so it's 4.30, um, so I'm going to start the webinar now. And hello and welcome to this FMB webinar that's been recorded on Tuesday the 11th of May 2021. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I hope everyone watching is well. Um, today we're going to be discussing the very important topic of health and safety. So I'm Hayley Lorimer, Director of Membership Services at the FMB, and today I'm joined by Andy Harper of the Building Safety Group who's going to talk a bit about your legal responsibilities as business owners and directors um, and a bit about risk management as well. And as also joined by Sadie Phillips, who's the director of FMB Insurance Services, who's going to talk about the insurance implications of, of getting health and safety wrong. So the format for today is that we will have um, both of our speakers will talk for 10 minutes or so, um, just covering some really important key points I'm going to share a little bit of information about resources that are available to you as FMB members to help you with health and safety. Um, then we'll cover questions and answers at the end, and you will receive a follow-up email that will give you links to any websites or documents that we refer to during the webinar. So don't worry if you miss any web addresses or anything like that. So I'm now going to hand over to our first speaker for the day, which is Andy from the Building Safety Group. Over to you, Andy. Welcome. Um, my name is Andy Harper. I'm one of the members of BSG, the Building Safety Group. We've got a, uh, we're a membership organisation. Obviously, we've got details of, of that uh, for your uh, perusal. We are the largest uh, construction safety group in the country, a specialist country in the country. Uh, we've got 50 years experience, 20,000 site inspections per year. Um, so we are out there all day, every day, um, with various different uh, health and safety checks that we do um, and the assistance we provide. Um, I'm just going to run through the basis of um, health and safety management, which is required by yourselves. It's a fairly quick dip into this. So um, if you've got any questions, obviously, you can run that through Hayley afterwards. But to start with, we're going to talk about the Health and Safety Work Act. Um, it's very important that everybody understands that the Health and Safety Work Act affects everybody. Well, there's no exceptions. There's no exceptions to this. But it sets out what employees and employers must do. It is a, uh, a fairly robust act. Um, been with us for quite a while. And it is the main act where the agency would prosecute if they had to. Regulations, health and safety regulations, a myriad of health and safety regulations, and they are all enabled by the Health and Safety at Work Act. In fact, they are statutory instruments of that act. Um, so all the regulations we talk about, um, health and uh, work, working at height, asbestos regulations, all the various stuff, what, uh, a couple of regulations which we'll talk about uh, uh, in a second, which is CDM, but the HSC, Part of my job at BSG is to liaise with the HSC. Um, I do that all over the country. I deal with the construction inspectors, which are, which are tasked to go out there um, and do regular inspections. They're actually doing an awful lot of COVID inspections at the moment um, out on site. But they have different alerts where we let people know that they will be out at certain times of the year looking at certain issues, and they regularly do that. So, Health and Safety Work Act again. This section 33 is very important for anybody who is the owner or the director of any company, and it identifies the offences that you will fall off, uh, which will fall to you, should there be uh, a failing under the Health and Safety Work Act. So section 33 is an offence for a person to fail to discharge a duty imposed by sections two to seven. And that, those sections cover everybody who, who are either people who work for you or people who are impacted by the work you do. Uh, to contravene sections eight to nine or to contravene any health and safety regulation. To, in, to intentionally obstruct an inspector in the execution of, of, his, of their duties. It's also an offence to make a false statement to an inspector, to make a false entry in any register or book kept under regulations, or to fail to comply with the requirements of improvement or prohibition notice. 
And proven and prohibition notices are, are the tools of the agency. So if they go to a, a site, a building site, and they find something which they um, think needs an improvement, they can issue a, an improvement notice. It gives you a period of time to improve that under the law. If they issue an, a prohibition notice, that work must stop. So therefore, if you breach any of the improvement or the prohibition notice after it's been issued, then that is another failure. Section 37 provides where an offence is, sh is shown to have been committed with the consent, connivance or neglect of a director, manager or secretary. Both the corporate body and the individual may be prosecuted and punished accordingly. Um, if you look on the HSC website, you'll see a myriad of uh, recent prosecutions, including criminal sentencing for people who have fell um, in serious breaches of the Health and Safety Work Act. Where an employer has five or more employees, they must prepare a written safety policy and bring it to the notice of all employees. So if you've got five or more employees in your company, then you must have a health and safety policy. The policy should set out the organization and arrangements for enforcing the policy. The policy is to be revised as and when required. CDM. Fairly new regulation we've had with us, well, obviously with this one for the last six years. Um, it covers all of construction and it is fairly uh, detailed in the roles and duties of everybody involved. They include the client, principal con contractor and the principal designer. How those are explained are relatively clear. Um, the client will have duties unless this is a domestic client, obviously, which I'll, do, which, I'll, which I'll mention in a moment. But the principal contractor and the principal designer will have to uh, as, have roles to uh, uh, pass between them. A construction phase plan, I'm not sure if everybody's heard of this. A construction phase plan is a document that's developed from the pre-construction phase information pack, if you get it, and records how health and safety will be managed throughout the construction phase of a project. This is a very simple example. So a two page construction phase plan for smaller projects. Every project must have a construction phase plan. Construction design management regulation CDM, obviously, the areas of concern. Small sites with fewer than 15 people uh, where, where more than sorry, fewer than 15 people are employed are identified as the largest challenge, particularly their general lack of understanding and disregard of their responsibilities and duties under health and safety regulations. And the, the top five things we find in the 20,000 site inspections we do per, per year are working at height, edge protection, COVID-19, that means obviously setting your site, site up is a a place of business which is COVID secure, dust management and hand-arm vibration syndrome, how that is managed. CDM applies to all construction projects. Notifiable construction projects under CDM are construction projects which last longer than 30 working days and have more than 20 workers engaged simultaneously and in, point in the project or have construction projects which exceed 500 person days. If so, that an F10 will need to be uh, recorded with the HSE on their online portal. CDM duty holders, very important to understand the differences. Commercial clients, so a business which is, is asking you to uh, uh, perform construction works in relation to their undertakings. A domestic client, so uh, the homeowner, principal designer, which is the first designer or somebody appointed under CDM by the client. Designers, architects, principal contractors, which is very often uh, uh, the first builder there. Contractors, including self-employed and subcontractors and workers. Everybody on that list are duty holders under CDM. So what you need to do to monitor your health and safety. This slide is from the head of the HSE in the London area. And it actually describes 
planning, managing, and or monitoring, checking, auditing, inspecting, looking, asking, are almost all construction incidents and concerns the HSE investigates involve a lack or a deficiency in one or more of these elements. So they haven't planned it, they're not managing it, or they're not monitoring it. So we use in health and safety jargon something from a document called HSG 65, which is plan, do, check, act. So you plan it, you do it, you check that it went as you, it's going as you, as you thought it was, was, and if it's not, you act upon it, and then you go around again. Very key part of health and safety is demonstrating that you've planned it adequately, you're doing it in the right way, you check it, and then you act upon those. Another key thing, this is from a barrister who um, assists individuals and companies who are being prosecuted under health and safety law. How to avoid the worst of any legal action. First and foremost, don't have an accident. Secondly, have a good system. Uh, Hayley's going to talk to you about how much more documentation and, and help is available through FMB, um, which I would recommend if you're not using it, to use it, but have a good system which you can rely on. Know your duties, all your duties, and also know the duties of everybody involved in your undertakings. Fulfill your duties, but make sure everybody knows it both before and after the accident. So be, be open and honest that you're going you're gonna to fulfill your duties which are clear and understood. Okay? So you not only have to do it right, but you have to prove that you're doing it right. Okay, so with that, any questions, Amy? Thanks, Andy. That There are a couple of questions um, that members have popped in the box, but we'll save those till the end, till after we've heard okay. from, from Sadie. Okay. Um, yeah, and we'll take for thanks for that. It was a bit of a tall order to, to cram yeah. all the information into 10 minutes, but thanks for doing that. And it usually, um, take, usually takes me half a day just to get to start on it, only. I'm sure, I'm sure it does. Okay, so thanks for that. And I'll hand over now to um Sadie, who's going to talk about insurance issues. Thank you. you. Thanks, Hayley. Um, I won't I won't talk to you for too long. It's really just to um to highlight and to flag some of the things that as a business you need to consider when you're thinking about your health and safety on site um, in respect of your insurance policy. So I'm going to use for you a real example um, of an insurance policy that um, FMB Insurance had provided to a member for many, many reasons. I won't name anybody uh, as I'm talking about it, but this is a real example. So uh, we provide an insurance for a member company uh, who undertook general building work, domestic and light commercial, didn't really particularly work at any great height. They weren't a particularly high risk company. Um, we're doing work on a property. It was a single story wraparound extension and a loft conversion. Uh, and in the course of that, they needed to bring in a bona fide subcontractor to undertake some work to the flat roof on the extension to the rear of the property. A bona fide subcontractor, as all of you will know, will have their own insurances in place. But equally, the contractor, the main contractor, has overall responsibility for that site. And what they should have done was do a health and safety check with the bona fide roofing contractor on site, walk around with them, uh, highlighted risks, um, specifically on the roof, where the um, entry and exit points from the roof were, the guardrails, any particular um, risks to that flat roof, any openings um, indicated where there was protection around those openings, all that kind of stuff. You can probably tell from the tone of my voice that those things did not happen. And very sadly, one of the roofing contractors fell through a roof light and su suffered extensive um, injury. Um, loss of hearing, partial loss of sight. Um, they've had to have extensive physiotherapy to walk again. Um, and of course, a claim was then made on the insurance policy of our insured. Now, there is contribu contributory negligence in this case. So both the bona fide subcontractors insurer and our insured insurer will contribute to this claim. And it's a six figure sum. But our member, our insured, if they had followed the health and safety processes that they should have followed, would not have found themselves in the position where 
their insurer is paying out half of a six-figure sum in this settlement. Now, if they had done that, there wouldn't have been any contribution um, there. And you could say, well, that's okay, because that's why you have insurance. That you know, That's why we've got it there. And that's a fair point. But also, what it means then for this company is that we are no longer allowed to insure them. The insurer won't allow us because they've had to pay out such a big claim. We're no longer able to offer terms at their renewal so that they don't have us as an avenue they can go down. And similarly, when they're applying for a new insurance policy, they will have to declare this claim. And it's a big claim, even though only half of it is being met um, by the insurer, they will still have to declare it and it is still big. Um, And they can't not declare it because in not declaring it, if another claim came up in the future, the insurer would not have to pay that claim because there is a duty of disclosure on any company to declare any such instances. Now, what will generally speaking happen, what should happen when you renew a policy or you take out a new policy, the person running through the quotation with you should run through um, a list of disclosures and assumptions. And those disclosures and assumptions will generally be, have you had a criminal conviction? And the answer, um, have you had any health notifiable health and safety breaches? Yeah, you know, Questions of that nature. The assumption will always be no, 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 no. They'll read those questions to you. And if you answer yes to those questions, they will then ask you further questions. And probably um, they'll need to refer to an underwriter at the insurance uh, company to get you terms for the policy or indeed decline it, depending on uh, the nature of the claim. So really, my point is that you should be following the guidance. You should be following the law, of course, because actually, if something were to happen, if an accident were to occur and you haven't ticked those boxes and you haven't filled the forms in, actually, it's not just the injury or the damage that could occur on site. It's the knock on effect then for your business and what that could then mean. And so really, my advice is to you all to follow this, to do this, because it might seem onerous. But actually, in the round, you'd be breaking the law if you didn't, but also you're going to damage your uh, business in the longer term. One of the other things that we need to consider um, is COVID. Um, So um, Andrew mentioned this in his presentation around one of the um, CDM areas of concern being COVID-19. And certainly that is something that is high on the agenda of insurance companies, particularly insurance companies who insure construction companies. They're going to start asking a lot more questions if they're not already. Some are, some haven't quite caught up yet um, around the COVID secure measures that are on site. And probably it will be in those disclosures that I mentioned before, where they just say you have got a COVID uh, procedure that you follow. And the assumption is, yes, you have. Um, and, uh, And of course, you'll declare that you have. And of course, you have got them. But it's making sure that you have got those because... A lot of insurance policies now, contractors' liability policies in particular, have got COVID exclusions where they're not necessarily going to provide cover um, if COVID um, it becomes apparent on site and it can be proven. So if you've got all of those measures in place, then you are well protected. So you're both protecting your business um, and its sustainability, but you're also protecting your employees, visitors to site um, and everybody uh, like that that could um, conceivably need to be covered. And my final point around the COVID thing is that the health and safety executive are doing spot checks. They are uh, dropping into sites um, to make sure that people have got COVID secure sites, that they've got measures in place, that those things are uh, being well advertised and that staff on site are aware of them. And the reason I know this is because they're not just dropping in on uh, construction sites or um, just into schools or wherever they are dropping into offices. And I know that because they came into our office uh, last week to check our COVID secure measures. So um, be under no illusion, these things are being taken very seriously. And from an insurance point of view um, and from the FMB's point of view, we just need to make sure that you as our members are well protected and that you understand what it is that you need to do. Um, And that's enough for me and my horror stories. (laughs) Thank you, Sadie. But yeah, I I imagine there may be some um, members attending today who are feeling a little bit daunted after all of that information about their responsibilities and the implications. But um, if you're an FMB member, then obviously one of the reasons you are a part of the FMB is that you can then access all the support and resources that we have on offer to help you to comply with all of these 
um, things that you need to do. So the first thing is the health and safety advice line. I'm going to give you the number, but we'll also put it in the email that we'll be sending out to follow up this webinar. So the number to call is 0116-243-7623. And um, we don't get very many members calling that health and safety advice line each month and members tend to wait until there's a problem before they call the advice line so you don't have to wait until you've got a problem you can ring them at any time just to check use them as a sounding board just to check that you're doing the right thing and the other thing um, linked to that is the document library which is on the fmb website um, through the members area of the website, you can access the document library. You need to contact the membership team first to be given your login details for that. But when you do get in there, you'll find hundreds of relevant documents. There's over 100 health and safety related documents which are available to you 24-7 once you're registered on the site. Things like getting started with health and safety through to developing a health and safety policy. There's templates on there. And you, what you can do is download the document, the template, and then talk to one of the advisors about how to adapt that for your own business. Um, there's template risk assessments and method statements, information about working at height, manual handling, first aid, and the CDM regulations. So there's a lot of information there, which is free of charge to FMB members to access, which will really help you. We also have a range of e-learning courses and as Sadie and Andy have both referred to, the um, working safely during COVID is a really important issue still. And there is an e-learning course in there that is specific to construction. We've developed that specifically for our members about working safely during COVID. So do have a look at that. It's very comprehensive. And there are other e-learning courses on health and safety awareness, manual handling, fire safety, COSH regulations, asbestos awareness, etc. They're all really easy to access and they take about 30 minutes to complete. You can get a downloadable certificate at the end of that. And as Andy was saying, you need to demonstrate that you're doing this as well as actually doing it. So the certificate will help you with that. But they, these are all just short courses that are intended to be sort of bite-sized chunks of learning. They're not qualifications, but they're useful refreshers or introductions to the topic. Um, but if you're interested in going further than that and doing some recognised courses and qualifications, then the place to start, if you don't know where to start, is probably the CITB's website. So if you just Google um, CITB Site Safety Plus, that will take you to the course on this, the page on the CITB site that has the recognised health and safety courses listed, including there's a one day course for directors to um, cover the, the ground that Andy covered, really, but in a lot more detail, the director's uh, responsibilities for health and safety and through to the five day site management safety training scheme course, which is a, a recognised qualification that needs refreshing every five years. But there's all of that information is on the CITB site. Don't be led, misled if you Google that. You might see um, various training providers pop up advertising their specific courses, but it's a good idea to look at the CITB site first so that you can see which courses are recommended by them and, of course, access the grant funding for those as well. So I hope that that's useful information. We'll put um, links to all of that in the follow-up email for you as well. And if our participants would like to unmute themselves, um, we've got a, a couple of questions from one of our attendees to cover. Um, so Maya has asked about subcontractors. So when Andy, you were talking about responsibility for employees in terms yep. of health and safety, does that apply to subcontractors as well? And that's also relevant to the case that Sadie talked about as well, because that involves subcontractors. Yeah, I, th I think this, the, the, the case that uh, Sadie was talking about was a a bona fide subcontractor. The the, the subcontractors that 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 may or may be talking about are labour only subcontractors. So the master servant relationship then kicks in. They are they will be classified under health and safety law as your employees. If all you are doing is paying for their time. Okay. So 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 a uh, health and safety policy will need to be um in, it need to be put together, which encompasses them as well as any other staff. 
Okay, that's really clear. Thanks, Andy. And as I mentioned, we've got a template of that in our document library, if anybody wants it. Talking of documents, um, we've also been asked, can we get a sample of a construction phase plan? And as far as I know, that isn't something that's in the FMB document library. But Andy, do you know if it, do the HSE make a sample? Yeah, of that the idea? HSE have got a couple on there. We've got yeah. a very simple one, a concise uh, health and safety plan. Um, and there are various different ones out there, templates you can find. But the HSE, I think I've got two. Um, but it it just it, it's the, the, the best way to look at it is the size of the contract. If it's, you know, weeks and weeks of work, and with various different hazards, then you're going to need a, it, you will have to have a health uh, a construction phase plan which suits. If it's a simple, simple job, then it can be a, even even as low and as, as as small as a method statement. To be honest. Okay. Okay. So we don't seem to have any more questions. And if anybody has thought of a last minute question they'd like to pop in the Q and A box, please do that now on the basis that there's absolutely no such thing as a stupid question. And there may be other people thinking the same thing as well. So um, thanks to Maya. She's just thanked us for the answers to those. Um, but so no other questions. I'll, I'll start to wrap up the webinar now because we've been going for half an hour, which is what we said. Oh, Lorraine has popped a question in the box. Are there any courses that you would recommend to attend? So I think Andy would probably agree with me that you should look for those CITB Site Safety Plus courses. Yeah, and if de de definitely CITB, definitely SMSTS that, that, that Hayley mentioned. Um, if you're managing health and safety on a construction site in any way, shape or form, SMSTS is the one that the regulator of the agency would look for. CITB um, director's responsibility is always a good one to find out how you should manage your business. Um, but then you can get a smaller two-day one if you've got supervisors, which is triple STS, which is site supervisor safety training scheme. Another very good course. Yeah, those are kind of the gold standard courses, aren't they, Andy? That members they are. should be looking out for. The SMSTS um, is, is worthwhile not only for that, but you also get a set of books called GE Seven Hundred, which will give you all the uh, sort of additional documentation and management guidance for you to use on site. Yeah, and we're very aware that all of this training costs money, despite the grant funding that you can claim, and it takes time as well. Um, but if you think about the cost to the business that Sadie was referring to in terms of the insurance claim and future impact on their business, then it's an investment in the future of, you know, of your business. So hopefully that's all been helpful. We'll send out the follow-up email probably tomorrow. Um, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for to Sadie and Andy for their presentations and answering questions today. Um, and thank you to you for attending. The webinar recording will be available on the website and you'll get a link to that in the email as well. And we'll put a link to that page on the CITB website that shows you uh, those particular courses as well. So thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you. Bye.